today we will talk about XRP again and how it is attempting to implement a new feature called clawback in the XLS 39 update. So what this uh, enables is for uh, token creators who create tokens on the XRPL to essentially retrieve tokens in the case of a uh, incorrect transaction or if there's any kind of a legal dispute as well. So on the surface, this has gotten a lot of uh, poor feedback from the XRP community and the crypto community as a whole because it quote unquote isn't what crypto was originally made for. Well, I think that whole uh, Bitcoin libertarian ideology, I think it is well intended, but it is very poorly applied. And that's part of why the crypto industry is in the position it's in now, in my personal opinion. But I want to actually explain why this amendment and the clawback feature is actually a very positive thing for regulatory clarity and compliance and why it also um, makes the uh, the adoption of XRP and the XRPL even more appealing for uh, large f- financial institutions and enterprise adoption. So to explain what the XLS 39 c- c- clawback feature feature is, we have this uh, tweet here from Ripple X. Um, If adopted, the XLS 39 clawback feature will enable developers to provide enhanced trust and safety for their for their issued assets. Man, sorry about that. Um, We skip ahead. Uh, it's talking about certain geographies that might be in these uh, emerging economy areas like uh, Southeast Asia and Africa where things are still um, in relative turmoil economically. They don't have a lot of uh, regulatory oversight, I guess, to put that kindly. Um, But if enabled, Clawback allows the issuer to claw back tokens in cases of fraudulent activity or for account recovery purpose or, or, or purpose when a user loses access to their account. Uh, the feature works by enabling a uh, f- f- flag in the code for a tr- 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 trust line, which is required to send and receive a given asset with one another. Um, Before purchasing a token, users can check the trust line to see if uh, the clawback has been has been activated. Good God. Okay. Uh, So the clawback feature also complements the freeze feature which is comparable and can affect a trust line however that allows an issuer to freeze freeze assets in cases where malicious activity has occurred uh, trust lines are an object type that enable the XRPL to have effective asset control f- features. It essentially acts as a spam control and prevents um, unsolicited or unwanted t- token transactions. Um, so that's a pretty good explanation. Here is the article, uh, but it explains a lot about 
the, the, the actual code and how it works. So that's not all that important for me, in all honesty. Um, this is another article about what um, an authorized tr- 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 trust line is. And I think it's a little bit more uh, obviously helpful for us right now. They, 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 the, the authorized trust lines feature enables issuers to create tokens on the XRPL that can only be held by accounts that the that that the issuer specifically uh, 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 specifically authorizes this feature only applies to tokens and not XRP and that not XRP is very critical in this clawback amendment because a lot of people have been afraid that uh, their XRP transactions will be able to be reversed and uh, that opens up the question of um, what happens when we make a transaction that the f- financial authorities don't like. But we will talk about that more in here and, and how that would look like for something like an a CBDC on the, 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 the XRP. PL, which I have explained in the past, and I'll put that in a link here too. So this is important. Uh, we have from King Dog King Doggo here. Uh, banks do need this as they need a clawback feature if they really want to have them use the XR. PL. It is bull, bullish for the banks, but I do understand why people worry about it as well. Again, it's not talking about XRP. It is talking about assets issued on the XRPL. So it's not XRP itself. It is other kinds of tokens that operate on XRP on the XRPL, which is what I think a CBD. DC uh, will actually look like when it's actually operating on the XRPL. It's almost an NFT, not not true XRP. So here's an article about David Schwartz and his opinions on this. It is from yesterday. Uh, He did say that he was initially concerned about this, but he got more comfortable with it. So uh, he believes that the ability to claw back some funds when there is a dispute takes off the legal burden from the token issuer. And uh, it is important because this safeguard is critical to comply with court orders. Um, He thinks that with the current model without this, that uh, it would be hard to audit the XRPL. And if we are t- talking about f- um, mass adoption of XRP and the XRPL, then all of these large f- financial institutions and all of these uh, large enterprises will want these kinds of um, compliance and auditing t- 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 tools as well. Without these, then the appeal of of um, of all kinds of of crypto that is designed for her enterprise won't look as appealing to the exact people that they are attempting to 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 actually sell this to. So that is here. Um, so here's some. Uh, concerns and a little clarity on it. Um, This is kind of in uh, reaction to a tweet that I think Lewis Jackson put out. He was talking about some uh, secret XRPL amendment. He has good information, but he's just really, uh, he has a lot of clickbait. So, you, you 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 just have to choose to work th- through that but it's important to point out that the proposed XRP clawback amendment it doesn't affect XRP it is only for 
assets issued on the XRPL, and it is a one-time um, uh, code c- configuration when that asset is uh, is actually issued. It is a feature to court. Uh, so it is essentially there to help attract adoption. Um, it'll make it much easier uh, when it's operating at a much a much larger volume because um, it's all about finding ways to make crypto more uh, more easily understandable and more adoptable. Like for example, uh, if you uh, forget your password in your PayPal account, well, there are ways to to go and get uh, your access back. This is kind of on that same line. Um, so he, 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 here's someone who's uh, a little bit um, su- suspicious of this, but um, as J- 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 Jungle Inc. says, this is normal and likely a requirement if you want to attract m- major uh, uh XRPL adoption. They do this on Ethereum, on uh, and on XLM as well. So, um, as long as you understand it, then I don't think it is a c- c- concern because at this point, I think a lot in the XRP c- community, we want mass adoption because we see the potential with XRP, with the XRPL, but we above all see the potential of the connections that Ripple has made with with large financial institutions and banks and central banks as well. So in short, this doesn't enable anyone to claw back XRP. This is for trust line tokens like CBDC, uh, CBDCs issued on the XRPL. So th- that right there is the main point. This won't really affect us and our XRP. It's only for different kinds of tokens and assets created on XRP on the XRPL. And uh, in my opinion, I think a CBDC DC, it won't just be XRP. It'll be some unique token or a unique asset that runs on the XRPL and XRP is used in the transactions and fees. So I think that this works really well with my point of view on where XRP can go. And I am personally okay with all of this.